Welcome to Science at FMNH, a podcast and video series that explores the behind-the-scenes science, collections, and research at Chicago's Field Museum. 300 million years ago, Illinois was a swampy forest that produced some of the coal that we find today. In this episode, we speak with Ian Glasspool on his research on coal formation and charcoal producing environments. My name's Ian Glasspool. I'm the Paleobotany Collection Manager and I've been at the Field Museum now for approximately seven years. I study environments from about 420 through to about 250 million years ago. Mainly what I study and look at is those environments preserving fire and in particular fire in coal forming environments. I'd like to talk about the history of Illinois about 300 million years ago roughly, 310 to be uh, a little more precise, uh, and to look at coal forming environments in Illinois, what the flora was like and uh, what a different world it was. Then the area I'm going to talk about is this area of Grundy, uh, Will and Kankakee counties, known as the Maison Creek area. Illinois, at the time at which these Maison Creek fossils were deposited, was a very different world. Uh, we were tropical. In fact, we were right at the equator. So this was a tropical, ever wet, uh, swamp environment, quite different from uh, the world we live in today. The plant life in Illinois at the time was rather different. There were giant calamites, uh, horsetails, and further were the lycopods. These plants potentially grew to heights of up to 100 feet. Their modern relatives, here's a lycopodium, are rather more diminutive in scale. A lot of what I've looked at here is actually fossil charcoal. We can actually use this to measure temperature of fires 300 million years ago. And we can use fossils like this and the distribution of charcoal in coals to look at uh, past fire events. And from those past fire events, we can build and construct models of atmospheric oxygen fluctuation through time and we've used that to look at extinction events and the changes in atmospheric oxygen and how they might have impacted extinction events. We are currently in an extinction event, the sixth great mass extinction, and consequently we're interested in defining some of the environmental parameters that might have a bearing on the, the world that we live in. Other major mass extinction events include the one that's been heavily studied at the Field Museum, the Triassic-Jurassic mass extinction event 200 million years ago. Across this event 200 million years ago, CO2 increased something in the order of between 700 and 1,300 parts per million uh, by volume in the atmosphere. That equated to a roughly five degrees C uh, global temperature rise, mean annual global temperature rise. Uh, if we look at carbon dioxide in terms of the modern environment, we're currently at about 390 parts per million uh, CO2 in the atmosphere and apparently still rising. So we've got a way to go before we hit Triassic, Jurassic extinction levels, but what we're looking at at this Triassic-Jurassic boundary is a very rapid change in carbon dioxide levels and from that we can look at the impact of global warming on the flora and by looking at the charcoal record we can look at the impact this global warming event had on the frequency of fires. 